the free flow, unrehearsed nature of each performance. It's organic, real thing, just, just goes along with them. Well, they wanted it mixed analog. That was the only real stipulation. And, and uh, they basically left it to me to figure out how to best do that. We experimented a lot. We changed gear quite a bit. Uh, we changed the drum set once. We changed the bass rig three times, I think. The guitar rig changed quite a bit. Five months of rehearsal and uh, experimentation to figure out the best way to uh, to approach this. Oh, so our front end preamplification is uh, Rupert Neve Dante preamps. Flexibility wise, what that gives us is the ability to do a, a split, a Dante split so that I can feed um, a record rig up here, feed everything else up here, as well as feeding a backup console and the broadcast rig. The Rupert Pre's give us the flexibility of being able to split the signal, multiple locations, so we can have multiple multi-track rigs, multiple consoles hooked up, and be able to place them wherever we need to. Once we get our signal to those pre's, we bring them up into RedNet converters. We're using RedNet 16Rs to convert back to analog. And the conversion is very seamless. Um, no signal degradation or anything like that. Um, and then we also are utilizing RedNet um, 64Rs to convert to optical MADI to feed our um, UAD servers um, for time-based effects and some of the drum processing uh, right now. And that is part of the reason why we also have a backup desk is so if those servers for any reason have an issue, um, it's a simple unmute a VCA there, drop a VCA here, and you're right back. And it's, it's seamless. Uh, the AB between the two is negligible. You can't hear a difference really. There's a broadcast mixer that travels with the band. He and I share the preamps. So we decided early on we wanted to if at all possible, use those as the, the front end of both of our setups. Uh, they're controlled by the laptop up here on the top. Uh, there's eight, eight channel units, so there's 64 total pre's. Uh, it's converted to Dante. While it's Dante, there's UAD servers that are added to the drum channels and I have some effects created in the UAD servers that follow the snapshots from the console. On the master bus, there's a Massenburg parametric and a TubeTech mastering multiband compressor. That's kind of the final polish. Inserted in the console, we have uh, the vocal channels, our Sheffer channels with the Rupert Nee primary source enhancers in front of them. A CL1, A, and a B for John and Anthony's vocal. Flea, there's a Wes Audio, their version of 1176 on there too. He basically shouts parts uh, that work better. <laughs> it's a little faster responding. Uh, the vocal bus has this IBIS parametric and this tube tech multiband. I create a band bus and a vocal bus and mix them together in, in the console. The band bus is created in this uh, Neve, the Rupert Neve Summy Mixer. So I have more drive. We can drive it hard for the rock songs, less for the uh, prettier songs. The drum sound is a 50th anniversary API 
2500. It's a pretty rare piece. Um, the Flea's bass sound, a lot of his sound is this Wes Audio NG bus compressor. It's a new, new compressor. It has extra, an extra transformer where you can drive, you can put more of that drive in, which it works well with his, his bass sound. The, there's another tube tech multi band on John's guitars. He plays, uh, strats and tellies mostly. There's a Gretsch he uses towards the end of the show, but the strats through the marshals get really bright. So that kind of softens the, the very top end, uh, and then opens it up when the, he's playing the, the Gretsch. More insert stuff over here, drummer gates. I'm gating some stuff in the servers and gating it over here as well because of the volume on stage. The drum monitor's pretty loud. At times, we've had four Marshall cabinets going. All the SVTs are going. It's pretty fucking loud up there. I can multi-track. I can work off of the multi-tracks. We use the Dante manager to switch back and forth from live to the recording. The console is automated as much as the, the faders all move, the on-off buttons, the aux sends on and off work enough that for this band, it works perfectly. And the PM5000 is a great sounding console. It's one of the best sounding analog consoles made, period and by far the most dependable. Even when analog consoles were new, these never broke. As a safety precaution and the fact that we ran out of channels and this band frequently has guests, so we wanted to add some type of console to facilitate all that so we ended up using the Midas HD 96. It's for uh, additional musicians and it is also a fail safe if for any reason our servers fail for the drums or if a beer flies in and nails our analog console we would be able to finish the show without a, um, a catastrophic failure. Kanye West did a surprise appearance at Rolling Loud and uh, they had GSL. I, standing behind it, <laughs> uh, was, was really impressed with the rejection. The Chili Peppers don't want to hear or feel the PA on stage at all. They want what happens on stage to be under their controls sonically. To accomplish that, that this was the best choice. We went as far as we possibly could. Hell, we spilled out, you know? I'd like to spill out more as soon as we can figure out how to do that safely. But that is the trick with stadiums to just not make something in a box that looks just like the guys yesterday that had a thing in the box. My wife had the idea to continue out and under the band. And then the setup guys again had the idea to like have an underbite there. It was a funny like collaboration. So it would finally get to the cool look, just kind of batting ideas around as it kind of grew and grew in size, you know, um, it took, an army to, to design it. We call it the clam or the half pipe. We've got the big central video element and then we've we've surrounded that with Chauvet Pixel 8 bars. They're pixel maps, so they the video content maps across those as well. And in addition to them being standalone fixtures in their own right, they're incredibly bright. I'm incredibly impressed with them. It's not something I've seen before, um, but we could hit the far end of the stadium with those without the video content on. Then we kind of move out to either side of the stage. We've got some big pods, magic panels. They're, they're amazing, nice and easy to rig. Uh, big shout out to Wickley, Wickley Designs. He, uh, he designed those and integrated those all for us. 
they fly on the automation. So we get lots of looks out of those. Again, they're pixel mapped. So we run the video content kind of spreads across those. And then in front of those, we have what we call the wings, which are 13 foot sticks of truss with Proteus's Q8s and more pixel eight bars on. So that's kind of a nice big scenic element. Again, they can go to sort of all sorts of angles on the automation trusses, fly in, fly out. And then as we progress wider out, we've got our IMAX screens, which we have surrounded with a mixture of Pixel 16 bars and Pixel 8 bars. And they create a nice big surround. We don't map content on those, but it's just kind of giving giving a picture frame to the IMAG, I suppose you would say. It's a nice, nice look. And then we have some Q8s giving a bit of audience oomph out there. We don't do traditional mofes on this show, so we, we kind of have LED strobes doing that kind of boom in your face. And then we have what we call the screamers in the upstage floor. Again, more Proteuses, P10s this time. Big, oomphy wash fixtures, <laughs> very in your face if you want it to be. Actually, my favorite fixture of the show, uh, we have um, some very, or a very small number of side light fixtures. They're the Chauvet Color Strike M's, equivalent to a JDC, but IV, IP rated. They're incredibly bright, very impressed with those. Nice new, new fixture they brought out this year or last year, so yeah. Really, really happy with that. And very lucky PGP have invested in a lot of inventory for this show. So everything is nice and new and shiny. And, you know, as a crew chief, that's always very nice to have as someone's bought you a load of new lights to play with. funny the they're the only unit that's not ip rated in our whole show and it's the ones that are out <laughs> towards the edge but the same thing roby control ground control two on each guy i do it with my fingers on the desk it's pretty easy I, i've been trying if i can afford it with anyone i work with to do something similar to that it beats the heck out of that big gnarly circle in the front you know just pushing them into the scene as opposed to these like lift them off the scene you know come up with a really nice system on this we're using the tmb easy land product and uh proplex iqs for data distribution so we're running streaming acn for the whole system and then we can pop out any universe in any of our four dimmer locations all the pixel mapping is done at front of house by josh our resolume guy and with Leif, and they they integrate all that and then we just get dmx down the system so there's no media server at this end of the multi-core media servers are all at front of house and then that that feeds back to us through through data integration. It's a TMB product. The Easy LAN allows us to run fiber or Ethercon trunk lines, and we can then spit out VLANs. So that can run up to nine VLANs down each trunk line. That's very handy for us because we have the PS net, which is the automation control. We have uh, guest artists we can put down a separate VLAN, and we have our own streaming. And for the robo spots, we have the camera down those lines as well. So this is the TMB ProPlex Easy LAN. As you can see here, we've got our trunk lines flashing. That shows we've got our trunk lines connected in the back. And then each of these four sections is configurable to a VLAN. We can run up to nine VLANs through the system. So each one is a separate network. So at the moment, one is my streaming ACN network. Two is PSNet, which is the automation. And then we could configure these anywhere up to nine. So I would just press the button and it would allow me to scroll through. I can make that VLAN four now and that would then pop out VLAN 4. And if I dialed into VLAN 4 at any of the other locations, including front of house where they have one of these, that VLAN 4 would be connected in every location. And then at the bottom here, these are the IQ16s. These are all configured to provide various universe outputs. We can just use a touchscreen menu on that. There's no computers involved. I can go in there and I can configure any universe, any output to be any universe that I want it to. That just runs off streaming ACN, so that's that's plugged directly into the Easy LAN at the top, and then it converts that streaming ACN into plain DMX, and then we output that through the opto, opto splitters up to the units. Just because we have so many fi fixtures that we're running in high pixel mode, I just I need the parameters. Even with three full size MA3s in the network, I don't get enough parameter counts. So we're we're currently running one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
eight active MPUs and we've got two spares in the system to keep that parameter count up. So yeah, quite a, quite a heavy parameter count. It's the simplest way we normally do. It's, it's song-driven macros. Each macro gets a page. The whole Q, Q stack is on one handle. Um, next, next, next. Got a bunch of uh, deformers, however, that would be to, to either mess with the lights or change them just so that it's not just next, next, next. And there's certainly no time code. And this hand, each guy, each band member gets a finger for a spot. The way I've done it forever, so I can I can really have total control of the key lighting at all times. So it's rock, 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 deform, 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 key lighting here. It's 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 super simple. And on our other desk, our new young friend Jolly, he deforms and messes with the uh, video content, the touch designer stuff, and the notch effects. He has certain parameters. He's doing basically the same thing. So the video's kind of live. There's no canned clips. So it's fed to us through touch, and he's, <laughs> you know, rocking it at the same time as I'm deforming the lights. So now we have two guys doing it at the same time. They're playing live. They're playing real. There's no time stamp on this stuff. Of course, I'm going verse, chorus, verse to stay with where we're supposed to be in the song, but I'm certainly still messing it up. And the same with video. It's the most we've ever done that you know i don't think the band will ever have time code and that's kind of cool it's organic real thing just goes along with them <laughs> <laughs>